You are watching GNS TV Lansing, God's filling station. Well, good evening, and welcome to Empower Her Ministries, where there is power in the Word. My name is Angela, Evangelist Angela Hook, and I am so excited again to be back on air with you all on this evening. Today, I would just like to share just briefly a little bit of information about who we are, Empower Her Ministries. Our purpose is a, we are a global marketplace ministry that will impact the lives of women despite their age, their race, their economical status. God has assigned women to break down glass ceilings and generational barriers for you to walk in the purpose that he has for your life. Some of the services that we provide, we do preaching and speaking engagements. We have specialized workshops and conferences. And what I mean by specialized is a lot of our um, conferences is designed to give women a safe place to come and be refueled through the word of God and prayer. We also offer counseling. I am a licensed professional counselor and I counsel all women, but I also want women to know that if you are um, in a leader position or if you are a pastor's wife, if you are someone in corporate office that needs to be counseled, please reach out to me. We also do discipleship for women. We disciple women because we want women to grow closer in their personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And also we'll pray with them. The Bible tells us that. It says to make disciples of all nations. And that's what we want to do. And that's found in Matthew 29. If you go there, read the whole uh, chapter of Matthew 29. I'm telling you, we want to disciple women. We also offer the mental health um, counseling, uh, mental health awareness for churches. If you have an organization, if you want someone to come out and just share information on um, mental health awareness. We talk about stress. We talk about anxiety. We talk about depression. We talk about grief. So if you're interested in those services, please contact me at 517 271 8441. So I just wanted to briefly give that information to you. Right now, we're, we're getting ready to go into the Word of God. And guess what? I'm excited about this topic because I feel like everyone becomes distracted. And that's what we're going to talk about on this evening, distractions. Think about that. In this society, we have so many distractions. You think about social media. You think about things that may be going on in your job, in your home, with your family. Many distractions that try to get our focus off of Jesus. So let's pray. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, I come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And I just want to thank you for this opportunity as we come on and share your word with those that are out there that may be listening that needs a word of encouragement, to need to know about distractions and how that they can keep their minds and their hearts stayed on you. And if they're dealing with distractions, let them know, Father, that they can turn for you to you for that help. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to be coming from Luke. And again, I'm coming from the um, New King James um, International um, Virgin Bible. So if you would turn there, if you got a pencil and pen, get it right now so you can take some good notes. So we're going to start at verse 38. It says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But listen to this. But Martha was distracted with much serving. 
And she approached him, talking about Jesus, and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, he had an answer for her. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. So let's look at that word distraction. Distracted means one, a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to something. Two, extreme agitation of the mind and the emotions. Three, having one's thoughts or attention drawn away, unable to concentrate or give attention to something else. So think about that. As I talked about that earlier, when we are um, distracted, things begin to happen. We become so distracted that we get our focus off of was important. And so this, this is what she did. She became so distracted with serving. Now let me say this. It wasn't the fact that she was being or showing um, hospitality. That wasn't the issue. The issue was she became so distracted that she took her eyes off what Jesus was doing at that time and he was literally and her sister was literally just chewing and taking in the word and sometimes we can become so distracted and then if you think about it in verse uh, 40 it, talk, it, it says this when she talked about how um, she said Lord do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone think about that you may be in your prayer time. You may be reading your word and someone just uh, charge into your room or they, uh, you knock on the bathroom or you get a call on the phone. And all of a sudden, you become distracted by that other person. So that's why we have to be careful. She was doing much serving and he asked her, what are you, and I want to ask you today, what are you distracted by that is causing you to take your eye, your time, and your attention from Jesus? I'll give you an example. It was some things that was going on this morning, and I was trying to prepare myself because I knew that I had to come on and share with you all on today. And I'm telling you, everything tried to come against me to get my focus off of what I needed to do on this evening to bring this word to you. And that's what happens a lot of time. And we have to pay attention to what's going on around us. Is this coming to try to get me off course? Is it distracting me? If you think about it, it talks about how she had much serving. She was serving. And sometimes we can get so busy with serving that are we really taking the time to sit down and get in the face of Jesus? Are we? And sometimes we think, well, what I'm doing is, is, is good. And that's not the issue. We can be doing a lot of good things. But is that really taking us away from the main thing? And I like to say that Jesus is the main thing. Is that really taking us away from prayer? That we get so busy, we have to work, we have to tend to our families, we have to, we, we serve at church, we uh, serve in our community, but are we serving Christ? Are we taking that time to spend that time with him? I remember when I first met my husband, I had to literally sit down and spend time with him in order for me to get to know him on, in an intimate way. And that's the same thing that we have to do with our relationship with Jesus. 
We have to sit down, take that time to get to know him on a deeper level. Especially us as Christians, sometimes we can say, you know what, I know the word. Um, you know, I have this uh, amazing relationship with the Lord. But even in that, we still have to take time with him. It's just like with anybody. If you say that you have a relationship with someone, but you never spend time with them. I'm talking about intimate time. I'm talking about cutting off the TV and cutting off your cell phone and coming away from the social media and being in tune with that person. That's what Jesus wants from us. He wants us to be so in tune with him that no matter what we're doing, that we don't become distracted. And so that was the issue with um, Mary. Mary had became... I'm sorry, Martha. That was the issue with Martha. She had became so concerned with her sister not coming in to help her. So think about it in this way. When you start to become so concerned with things that your mind starts to get filled with all different type of things, that's what brings on anger and frustration, stress. And I like what Jesus said to her. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled. He said about many things. And so I believe that Jesus is letting her know you have become so distracted now. And you're distracted by so many things that now you're interrupting what it is that we are doing here. Because you could be in the kitchen and still have your mind on Jesus. You could be cooking and you got him still in your mind. You're meditating um, on the scriptures that you have already um, inside of you. That's why the Bible tells us to meditate day and night. And so we can still do that. And we can still be preparing a meal, but keeping our hearts and our minds on Christ. But when distraction comes, it takes us off course. It's, it has all kind of things going on in our mind. I believe Jesus had, in one point, in addition to her marvelous preparations, I believe he was trying to really get her to see that she needed to add some spiritual sensitivity. She needed to be sensitive to the fact of what was going on with him and her sister. But she wasn't sensitive to that because she became distracted. Again, when we become distracted, it takes us off course. Verse 41, we're going to go back to, to that. And Jesus answered and said to her, he said, Martha, Martha, and he talked about being worried. Let's hit that. When you're worried, you're mentally troubled or concerned, feeling or showing concern or anxiety about what is happening or might happen. So again, he's trying to explain to her, you are worried about these things. And that's what happens. You become worried again, and it takes your focus off of what's important. The main thing, and the main thing is who? Jesus. So then he said troubled. He, he, he said that word troubled. Troubled is um, problems or conflicts. She became or made that um, where she felt like it was a she was acting as if it was a conflict in her life. The conflict was she wanted her sister in there with her, preparing and serving, but she was sitting at the feet of Jesus. That was her conflict. She was conflicted. That's why she told, um, that's why she said, told Jesus, tell my sister to come on in here and serve with me. Troubles. He said, you are worried about, you, you are troubled about many things. When you become distracted, listen to this, it produces worry. And worry produces 
trouble. Think about that for a minute. When you become distracted, it produces worry. And worry produces trouble. And you may be saying, um, Evangelist Angela, why, why would you say distraction would cause trouble? If you think about it, many times when we become distracted, we make decisions in our distraction. We make decisions based on we're worrying. Because when you're worrying, you start to do things to try to fix things. And it causes you to make decisions again that may take you off course or you make the wrong decisions, which can cause trouble in your life or the life of others. First Peter tells us this in 5, 7. He said, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. And so instead of us becoming distracted and worried and being troubled about things, we have to remind ourselves to cast all of our cares upon Jesus. Because those things that concern us concerns him. Proverbs 12, 25 tells us anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. That's why Jesus don't want us to become distracted because not only do it hurt our relationship with him because we lose that intimate time with him, but it causes relationship, it causes problems with us mentally and spiritually and emotionally. That's why the Bible tells us. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says this, in order that Satan might not take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So again, Satan knows how to get in there and get us off course and get us distracted again so we can take our minds off the main thing. Then he told her he was not going to cause his sister to cause her to go into the kitchen <laughs> But he said, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which would not be taken away. He said, I'm not going to take that away. She want to spend this time with me. Why would I take that away from her? And we have to be careful when we get people to come into our lives and um, we're, you know, we explain that, hey, um, I really need this time with the Lord. And they continue to keep trying to um, get us to do things outside of what we originally intent is to sit time down and have that time with Christ. Don't let them take that time away. Jesus calls us to faithful service that includes day-to-day -day work. But we shouldn't allow our responsibilities to get in the way of spending that time with him. But we should impart every activity with a focus on Christ. So it don't matter what all that you do throughout the course of your day, always remind yourself to allow Jesus to be the main thing. Always focus your mind and your attention. Focus what you do um, when you're serving. Keep an attitude of, I'm doing this unto the Lord. Because guess what? If we don't, we'll become distracted. We'll become angry and frustrated. But everything that we do, we can do it with the intent that I'm doing this unto the Lord. So that's what I wanted to share with you on today. Do not allow distractions to get in your way on this week. And when you recognize they're there, guess what? You can do something about it. You can talk to the Lord like I did this morning. Lord, I'm finding myself getting distracted. Help me. Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to help us. He wants us to know no matter what, when we get off a of course, his mercy and his grace it's so amazing that we have another opportunity to get it right with him. So for you that's out there, you may not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. 
I want you to think about taking this opportunity. You don't have to come to a church to do that. You don't have to have a, a pastor to, to do that with you. It could be someone that um, knows the Lord that can walk you through that uh, confession. Or you could do it right there in your room. You can go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. So the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's the thing that we want you to know on today. That is nothing that you can do to separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing. So you can come to him. You can make him the Lord of your life. You can come to him in prayer and tell him your problems. You can come to him when you're feeling um, distracted and worried and um, you are concerned about your children or your mother or your father. You can bring those concerns to him. So we want you to do that on today. For those of you may say, you know what? I already have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But I still want to pray with you on today. Because I don't know about you, but I know that I find myself becoming distracted. And I need someone to uh, remind me that we can cast our cares upon the Lord. Because he cares so much for you. He loves you. One of the things I always think about, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And when I think about that, he didn't just give his only begotten son for me. He gave it for the entire world. And that includes you. So, oh, gracious Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And we just like to thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word with those that may be out there that's distracted, that needed to be encouraged, that needed to be um, uplifted, that needed to be strengthened with this word on today. Let them know, Father, that you would never leave them and you would never forsake them. Help them to keep their minds and their hearts stayed on you. Even when they're in the business of serving, let them know that they can be praying, Father, while they're serving. They can be talking to you. Let them know that you are um, a person that just wants them to be intimate with you. Oh God, on that area that we fell short, we asking you to forgive us. You said that we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And on today, God, we need your forgiveness. We need your cleansing power. We need you to heal us from the inside out. And Father, we just thank you that as we came on today, we thank you that your Holy Spirit was here with us. We thank you that every person that listened to this message on the day, or those that will come back on and listen, that you will begin, Father, to deal with their hearts and their minds and their souls and their spirits. You will draw them back to you, draw them back home to the heart of Jesus. And we just want to thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all again. We'll see you back on air every second and fourth Monday at 7 p.m. You are watching GNS-TV Lansing, God's Filling Station.